Hello everyone and welcome back to JG History and in today's video we're going to be looking at who were the Normans. The Normans were a royal dynasty that initially ruled over Normandy in northern France but eventually took over the Kingdom of England. In this video we're going to explore the origins of the house, we're going to look at some of its most prominent members and look to how it secured the Kingdom of England as well as the Duchy of Normandy. If you do enjoy this video please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel but let's begin. Every British person, no matter how knowledgeable or unknowledgeable they are on history, knows the date of 1066, the Great Battle of Hastings. Those a little more in the know could tell you that it was the year that the Anglo-Saxon king, Harold Godwinson, was killed in battle by his adversary, William the Conqueror, a Norman from Normandy in France. William became William I of England and established a new dynasty, the Norman dynasty, on the English throne. But who exactly were the Normans? The Normans were people from the region of Normandy in northern France. Normandy acquired this name as it was settled by the Northmen, aka the Scandinavians, aka the Vikings. Every road in European history always leads to the Vikings. The first member of the Norman dynasty was a man called Rollo the Walker. Rollo was born most definitely somewhere in Scandinavia, either in Norway or Denmark, around the mid 9th century. There is no consensus on Rollo's parentage or backstory, so we will stick with what is known. Simply that he was a very large Scandinavian man, with him supposedly, according to the Icelandic sagas, being named Rollo the Walker because no horse could carry him due to his enormous size. Rollo is known to have besieged Rouen in 876 and Paris in 885 to 886. After the Battle of Chartres in 911, which Rollo lost, he was granted lands in Upper Normandy by Charles the Simple, the King of France. This established the Duchy of Normandy, from which the Normans were the Dukes of. Rollo was baptised and pledged allegiance to Charles and this is why he was granted this land so he would not invade France further. The Duchy of Normandy became distinct from the rest of France with many Viking settlers immigrating and intermixing with the local population. The Normans were ethnically and culturally different to the rest of France but did not keep a segregated culture. They adopted Christianity and abandoned their pagan beliefs and Old Norse was replaced with the language of France, with some Old Norse words still sticking around. Rollo's male line continued to lord over Normandy, with a fairly neat line of succession passing to his son William Longsword, then onto Richard the Fearless, onto Richard the Good, the second Richard, and finally we get to something that's a little bit messy. Richard II's eldest son was Richard III, who inherited the Dukedom of Normandy after his father's death. Richard had a younger brother, Robert. After the accession of Richard III to the dukedom, Robert revolted against his elder brother. However, this revolt was quickly defeated by Richard and he imprisoned his brother. Soon afterwards, he released him after he received an oath of fealty. However, as soon as Richard III disbanded his army and returned to Rouen, he died suddenly in 1027 and the dukedom passed to his younger brother, Robert I or Robert the Magnificent. Robert thus became the Duke of Normandy in 1027 and around this time, he fathered an illegitimate child with a woman known as Her Lever. The child was William, the future conqueror of England, but known at this time as William the Bastard. Robert died in 1035 in the Byzantine Empire after going on pilgrimage and becoming ill. This left the eight-year-old William as heir to the dukedom, despite his illegitimate status. William faced several challenges as a child duke. He was a constant target of assassination and his guardians often ended up as casualties. William eventually and somehow survived his childhood to adulthood and consolidated the power of the duchy. Around 1051, Edward the Confessor, the King of England at the time, appeared to choose William as his successor upon his death. Edward the Confessor's mother was Emma of Normandy, a daughter of Richard I, the Duke of Normandy, who was the great-grandfather of William. This is a bit of a complicated relationship, but in simplified terms, it made the two first cousins once removed. Despite the claims of this promise, there doesn't appear to be any actual evidence that Edward the Confessor promised William the throne. At the same time, in 1051 to 1052, William married his wife Matilda of Flanders, and there is a fascinating tale about the marriage that transpired according to legend. When William sent his representative to ask for Matilda's hand in marriage, she said that she was far too high-born to marry a bastard. After hearing this response, William rode from Normandy to Bruges, found Matilda on her way to church, dragged her off a horse by her long braids, threw her down in the street in front of the flabbergasted attendants and rode off. And in some events, it also states that he rolled her in the mud and badly beat her before galloping away. So William the wife beater, as he really should be named if that tale is true, continued to believe that he would inherit the throne of England upon the death of Edward the Confessor. There were, however, some rivals. The primary contender being Harold Godwinson, 
son of Godwin the Earl of Wessex, the most powerful noble in England at the time. Supposedly, in 1064, Harold Godwinson was involved in William's Breton campaign, where he invaded Brittany, and during this Breton campaign, Harold supposedly promised to uphold the notion of William being the king after the death of Edward the Confessor. Now, this may have been invented to discredit Harold's claim to the throne, and there doesn't appear to be any actual evidence of it. Further contenders arose with Edgar the Atheling, son of an Anglo-Saxon king, King Edmund Ironside, and also Harold Hardrada, the King of Norway. Eventually, Edward the Confessor died in 1066, and Harold Godwinson, already in England at the time, and the most powerful man in the realm behind Edward, declared himself the king. Supposedly, Edward the Confessor had made him his heir upon his death, but again, there is no evidence for this. Harold became the King of England, and William, upon hearing this, was not too happy. As previously mentioned, Harold Hardrada was the King of Norway and also wanted the throne of England because he believed he had a connection through the North Sea Empire, which was established under King Canute. Eventually, in late September 1066, Harold Hardrada, the King of Norway, invaded England and fought Harold Godwinson at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Harold won this battle victoriously, and Harold Hardrada was killed. However, only two days after this victory, William set sail to England and landed at Pevensey Bay with his large Norman army. On the 14th of October, 1066, the Battle of Hastings commenced, with Harold Godwinson and his Anglo-Saxon army positioned on top of Senlac Hill in a defensive position. The Norman army, through tactical deceit or actually doing it and it working out, charged upward with their cavalry and turned and ran away, drawing the English out and killing them. At some point during the battle, William's men feared that he had been killed, but he showed himself and rallied them around him, and using the same tactic of feigning and retreating, William managed to win the battle. At some point during the battle, Harold Godwinson was killed in some manner, potentially being shot through the eye with an arrow, as shown on the bio tapestry. In any case, William was now the King of England, as well as the Duke of Normandy. His ancestor, Rollo, was a pillager and warrior and won the Duchy of Normandy, and now his descendant had acquired an entire kingdom. The Norman dynasty was certainly doing well for itself. Despite this great victory over Harold Godwinson, William encountered further resistance with the English Witten as they proclaimed Edgar the Atheling, the aforementioned son of a previous Anglo-Saxon king, Edmund Ironside. When William eventually mustered into London, those who were on the side of Edgar the Atheling swiftly changed sides and proclaimed him the king instead. He was crowned on Christmas Day, 1066, as the King of England. William, despite being officially the king, encountered even further rebellions, with the most significant being in the north, when the new Norman Earl of Northumbria and many soldiers were massacred at Durham. This prompted a response from William that was incredibly brutal, the harrying of the north. The Anglo-Norman chronicler, Orderic Vitalis, wrote, The king stopped at nothing to hunt his enemies. He cut down many people and destroyed homes and land. Nowhere else had he shown such cruelty. This made a real change. To his shame, William made no effort to control his fury, punishing the innocent with the guilty. He ordered that crops and herds, tools and food be burned to ashes. More than a hundred thousand people perished of starvation. I have often praised William in this book, but I can say nothing good about this brutal slaughter. God will punish him. Evidently, even a historian favorable toward William was not pleased at what he had done in the harrying of the North. The rebellions against William finally subsided and the king could concentrate his power over his kingdom. And this is where we see many of the most significant changes to the Kingdom of England with Norman influence. Mott and Bailey castles cropped up everywhere in order to terrify the locals against potential revolts. Whilst these were not technological innovations unseen anywhere, they were to the English, and their petrifying size and structure certainly made anyone think twice about crossing the new king. The aristocracy of England completely changed overnight, with the English lords being replaced with Norman lords. After 1075, all earls in the entire country were Norman. This created an even more pronounced division between the poorest and richest of society, as now the two groups were of completely different ethnic origin and spoke completely different languages. Norman French became the language of the learned and the upper class, whilst English was reserved for the peasants and the lower orders. English government already had sophisticated institutions compared to more rudimentary infrastructure seen across the rest of Europe, with each segment of land within the country being divvied up into shires, each with their own sheriff. The superior infrastructure and successful suppression of uprisings led William to be a majorly absentee ruler who spent most of his time back in Normandy. William was also the monarch when the Tower of London began to be constructed around 1078. The acceptance of the new Norman regime took time to settle in England, but eventually it was simple fact. William had three sons who survived him, 
Robert, William and Henry, all of whom we shall shortly dive into. William lived up until 1087, when he either fell from his saddle and injured himself, causing this wound to be infected and died, or fell ill, but in either case, he died in 1087, when he was around 59 to 60 years old. William's burial is another interesting tale, with the king having gotten rather large in his later years, and when he was pushed into the not-so-big coffin, the body ruptured and sent a repulsive odour emanating throughout the abbey, William's legacy is immortalised in English and British history, when we think of the start of English kings and queens, despite his Norman origins, William is typically the man who starts us off. Moving on to William's sons, William's eldest son was Robert, also known as Robert Curtos, followed by William, also known as William Rufus, and his youngest son, Henry. William promised each of his children before his death their inheritance, with Robert, the eldest, being bequeathed the Duchy of Normandy, and William, the second eldest, being bequeathed the Kingdom of England, and Henry, the youngest, a sum of £5,000. This led to a rather bitter conflict between Robert and William, as Robert wanted the Kingdom of England for himself. The two were natural rivals anyway, and the nobles believed the best solution was to have one singular ruler of the two, as if William and Robert were to have children, some form of conflict would arise over claims to the throne of England or to the Duchy of Normandy. William the Conqueror's maternal half-brother, Odo of Bayeux, supported Robert and led a rebellion in favour of him. This rebellion, however, was a failure, with the savvy King William II dividing his enemies with promises of land and money were they to switch sides. He also appealed to the English people, promising them the best law they had ever seen in this land, and personally attacked the rebels, laying a six-week siege to Pevensey Castle and capturing the leader, Odo of Bayeux. Robert Curthorse was still in Normandy when all this was transpiring, and his troops crossing the channel to assist Odo never arrived because bad weather kept them back. Odo, the richest man in the kingdom, was stripped of his titles and banished to Normandy, and Robert had to acknowledge that William was the rightful king and that Robert wouldn't be trying any more nasty rebellions. The personal life of William Rufus is rather interesting, as there is some speculation about his sexuality. William never married nor ever had any mistresses, and thus never fathered any children. As King of England, he would have had numerous marriage proposals and offers from many potential brides, yet he never accepted any. It cannot be said that he was homosexual purely because he did not take a wife or mistress, perhaps he had no interest in women whatsoever, or took a vow of chastity. Another element of William's personality was his propensity for being a cruel ruler. William's brother Robert wanted to go on crusade but needed a lot of money, so he borrowed 10,000 marks from his younger brother to go gallivanting off with an army. To raise such funds, William levied a widely hated tax on the whole of England and ruled Normandy in Robert's absence. On August 2nd in the year of 1100 in the New Forest in England, William was hunting with some of his men, amongst whom was his younger brother Henry, when in some unknown fashion he found an arrow through his lung and died. Who shot the arrow? We don't know for sure. Later medieval sources note that a Walter Tyrrell apparently was the one who shot William and fled to France swiftly afterward. Perhaps this was an intentional assassination, or perhaps it was an accident and Tyrrell fled the country fearing the consequences for accidentally killing the king. As mentioned, William never married and had no children. His younger brother Henry was alive, as was his elder brother Robert, the Duke of Normandy. Henry being in England, whilst Robert was still returning from his crusade, definitely helped his case in being crowned. Henry even occupied the royal treasury and argued since that he was born to a reigning king and queen, he should be the king, whereas his elder brother Robert was born before William conquered England. Henry, the youngest son who was never expected to inherit either the Duchy of Normandy or the Kingdom of England, swiftly crowned himself on the 5th of August 1100, just three days after the death of his elder brother. In November of the same year, Henry wed Matilda of Scotland, the daughter of Malcolm III of Scotland and Margaret of Wessex. This marriage gave the offspring of the couple and all future royals a blood link to the Scottish kings and also the Anglo-Saxon kings, with Matilda's mother, Margaret of Wessex, being the granddaughter of Edmund Ironside, an Anglo-Saxon king. Henry had two legitimate children by his wife, the eldest, Matilda, and their younger child, a son, William Adeline. Henry, however, was not a man fit for just one woman, as he had an innumerable amount of partners with whom he had many, many children. In total, Henry had 24 illegitimate children and two legitimate children. Despite Henry's coronation and marriage, his brother in Normandy was still a contender for the throne. Robert invaded England in 1101 and landed unexpectedly in Portsmouth with a few hundred men. These men were soon joined by many of the English barons who supported Robert over Henry. Robert appeared to have the opportunity to seize the treasury and potentially vie for the crown, but he waited for Henry to intercept him. 
Henry and he met at Alton in Hampshire, and the two agreed to a truce, the Treaty of Alton, where it was decided if either died without a male heir, the other would be king, and that Robert would recognise Henry as king, and Henry would not continue to claim Western Normandy for himself. After this agreement, Robert and Henry were on friendly terms, but Henry was not so friendly toward the barons that had supported Robert, with the most powerful of the barons, Robert of Belem, another Robert, having his castles besieged, and this Robert, Robert of Belem, being banished to Normandy. Robert Curthorse, Henry's brother, fought Robert of Belem in Normandy, but eventually had to ally with him, and this made Henry declare that his brother had broken the Treaty of Alton. Eventually, Henry invaded Normandy, and after some rather cruel tactics, with burning Bayeux to the ground being one of them, he defeated Robert's men and imprisoned his brother indefinitely. Henry had now acquired the Duchy of Normandy for himself, and thus also for his son to one day inherit. Despite William Adeline having an amazing inheritance to look forward to, both the Kingdom of England and the Duchy of Normandy, the young prince found himself in an unfortunate situation. The White Ship disaster occurred on the 25th of November 1120, with the ship harbouring many of the heirs of the nobility of both England and Normandy. The drunken boat of rich aristocrats set sail from Normandy, but soon ended up smashing into some rocks in the dark, and the ship sank, killing everyone on board apart from one man, a butcher from Rouen. This meant that Henry's only legitimate son was dead. This was a big problem. Henry quickly remarried to Adelaide of Louvain, but failed to conceive any more children with her. A couple of candidates were available as the next king, but after Henry's only surviving legitimate child Matilda was left widowed, when her husband, the Holy Roman Emperor died, he recalled her to England and declared that she would be the queen once he died. England had never been ruled by a woman, so whilst his barons promised to uphold this wish, Matilda's claim was on shaky ground. Matilda married Geoffrey of Anois, the son of Fulk of Anois, and the founder of the House of Plantagenet. Henry spent the rest of his reign worrying over his succession in 1135 after going against his doctor's advice and consuming too many lampreys, which are these disgusting sea creatures, Henry died on December 1st, 1135. This marked the end of the House of Normandy in the main male line. Matilda was a female descendant of the house and passed her Norman blood to her son, Henry Plantagenet, who would become Henry II. And we will discuss him and the Plantagenets in the next video about the next royal house of England. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment down below if you learned anything new or if you need to correct me about anything or you want to add any extra information. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.